Hi class, um, so I'll give you another tutorial on the uh, hints on assignment number four. Hope you're having a great break right here, but uh, you still need to do these assignments and the duty is on Monday. Okay, hopefully my video tutorial is not too late. Uh, yeah, I could have uh, made uh, a few more for assignment two and three, but it's just time to uh, consume. Anyway, so let's take a look at this assignments here. Uh, the first question, okay. The uh, it's a simple one. So you have a bar and there's a hole in, in it, and there are uh, forces, axial forces applied to the bar. Okay, and the load fluctuating from 12 kilonewton to 28 kilonewton. Okay, and we want to use modified Goodman Gerber and ASME elliptic criteria and compare the prediction. Okay, of um, the figure. Okay, so first of all, of course, you need to find out what uh, material of uh, uh, this uh, AI side 1040 steel is. Okay, and you also need to find out the yield strains. Okay, just in case for some other uh, criteria that we do need to use different SUT or SYT. Okay. Now the question give you is F mean and F max. Okay. So what you need to do is, right, you need to figure out uh, what is uh, the, basically, sigma A and sigma M, right? Okay, so this is a fatigue loading. Okay. So uh, sigma A, as we learned, is basically, in this case, you do have a hole over there, so you're going to, Need a fatigue stress concentration factor, right? And it's going to be F max F mean over the area, right? Uh, this one divided by two is your F a, okay? And then divided by the area, right? Is your the nominal ones, and then multiply by the fatigue stress concentration factor. Right? That's give you what the actual ones. So sigma m, right? Same thing. And uh, you will have K F, right? Uh, multiply by F max, F mean, divided by 2A. Okay? So I uh, recall this one here give you F A. Okay, that's right, this is plus. And this one here give you F M. Okay? So for these two numbers, uh, you should get. This is 92. This should be 231.6. Okay. Yeah. Now, how do you find a key F? Okay. So, now this is part, you know, you need to find it out by looking up the table. Uh, from first for right? You need to find out, you need to find the KT. Okay. And you also need to find the uh, sensitivity factor Q. Okay. So Q can be found from figure 6-20 or equation 6-34, I believe, uh, 34A, I believe, okay? So in my Excel template, I have already given you the formula, okay? Depends on the uh, unit in this question. This is a standard unit, okay? So you should use the SI unit the template to calculate the Q. And also find the things right, and basically this will give you uh, the key F. Okay, so key F is roughly 2.2. What I get if it's a little bit around this one, that's fine. Okay, yeah, and uh, so that's how you get this portion here. Okay. And for uh, you making use of the modified Goodman and or any other criteria, uh, you also need to you find out what the uh, uh, endurance limit S E value. Okay, so for SE value, right, you will need to calculate, right, a pipeline, a set of uh, marine factors. Okay, in this particular case, all you need is KA and KB and KC. Okay, yeah, so axial loading, so this is actually KB is 1, and KC is 0.85. KB is, is KA is calculated as a 0.832. Okay. 
So anyway, that's how you do the calculation. So once you get this right, and then, then you are ready to apply the safety, the fatigue uh, criteria. Okay. So for mod for example, modify Goodman is sigma A over S E sigma M over S U T, right? So you should guess in F equal to 1.2. Uh, for any other criteria, you should uh, uh, consult with the the class handout. Right, I give you a handout in the class. Uh, there are a set of uh, uh, equations for different criteria, and then you should uh, use uh, use that one. And I've also uploaded a Excel file containing all different kind of uh, uh, formulas for different criteria. Okay, uh, all you need to do is basically just plug in, so let me show you, all you need to do is just plug in the numbers okay? and you will get you will get the safety factors so for example okay yeah so this is the one I'm talking about here so I have given you this template, it's on the web CT uh, plug in the sigma a. Now you don't have to use this, so you can just get rid of these two lines here. You can just plug in what you calculate a sigma a and a sigma mm in here, and you will get the safety factors all over here. Okay, but I do encourage you to calculate by hand first or calculator. Okay, instead of all, oh, instead of just jot down the numbers on on your paper, right? Uh, you know, it, it's it's for verification purpose. Okay. Uh, at this stage, you need to do the exercise yourself. Okay, so let's take a look at the second one here. Uh, this one here is, right, the first one here, uh, this is what we call uh, fluct fluctuating, right, simple loading, right, because you do have sigma A and a sigma M. In the second question here, okay, now you look at this one here, what we have here is, we have a steady torsion stress and alternating bending stress. So, you not only you have tau, you also have sigma, right? Now, because it's a steady torsional stress, so which means tau m, right, is equal to this, okay? And tau a is zero. Okay? Yeah. Now, the Second one here, an alternating bending stress. So that means it's a, this is a completely reversed bending stress. So sigma m is zero, and sigma a is 172 meter pound. Okay, there. So this is what you can get directly from the given condition. Okay, and what we have here is actually a combined. Okay, it's a combination of loading. So in other words, right, in order to apply those fatigue criteria, Gerber or ESME or modified Goodman, we need to come up with this, uh, using this uh, well, missile stress, to come up with a sigma A prime and a sigma M prime. Okay, yeah. So making use of this, this is very simple. And um, so sigma A, you know, you have these two here, so that's a sigma A square. You know, plus three and tau a square, which is basically sigma a. And sigma m is the sigma m square plus three and tau m square, okay, which is square root three and tau m. Okay, so that's how you get these two here. Now, once you obtain these two, okay, and uh, you should get this one. It's supposed to be 178. Once you get these two, right, and uh, then you can simply use the modify the formulas for that. For example, your NF will be just sigma A prime over S E sigma M prime over S U T, right, for Goodman. Okay, and uh, for any other material, any other formulas, and you can just simply um, change the sigma A to sigma a prime change the sigma m prime sigma m to sigma m prime okay yeah 
Now, what about the factor specific guarding against first cycle yielding? Okay, so in this case, right, uh, you your n y, okay, your first cycle yielding according to your criteria, it's a sigma a, a sigma a, okay, uh, sorry, yeah, sigma a plus sigma m when when this is uh, fluctuating simple loading, right? Now in this case, what we have here is a com combination of loading. So your so this portion in here has to be changed. Okay, this portion. And as a matter of fact, okay, and this is basically your sigma max. Okay? If you recall, you know, if you have something like this. Okay? So this is your sigma m, and this is your sigma a, right? So sigma max equal to sigma a plus sigma m, okay? But what we have in here is a combination of loading. So your sigma max, okay? In our textbook, we said we can use a conservative, we can use a, a conservative model which says sigma max is approximately sigma a prime plus sigma m prime, okay? But this is conservative means this is not an accurate one. So what will be the accurate way to calculate sigma max? Again, you have to use this one mesa stress. Okay, so your sigma max. Let's see, it's a prime. Okay, so in, as a matter of fact, it should be sigma a plus sigma m. Okay, square plus three and tau a plus tau m. You know, squared one over two. So here is your normal. You know, uh, the normal stress maximum, the torsional stress maximum, then combine together, give you the one well, mesa stress uh, maximum. Okay, so this calculator is supposed to be around this one here. Okay, and uh, you can try to compare the values of these two here. Okay, you can compare these two. You will see that to this one. Okay, naturally. Is a is a bigger value, so that's why we call this is a conservative, more conservative calculation. If you do this, okay. So, anyhow, you will calculate n y, which is just s y over sigma max prime. Okay, so that's how you do this uh, first one, first cycle yielding. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's question two and question three. Question three just change the condition a little bit. You know, uh, repeat problem two with a steady torsion of one hundred, okay, and alternating torsion. Okay, so yeah, the, the torsion not only has a steady value but also has an alternating component, and the bending stress is still alternating here. Okay, so what does that mean? Is your sigma a right is one hundred fifty. Sigma m is zero, and your tau a right, is eighty, okay? and your tau m is hundred. Okay, so that's what it means here. Now, because of the change, right? Then your your uh, sigma okay, there you go. Your sigma a prime and your your sigma m prime will change. Okay, so you do the same thing. Okay, uh, you will get um, uh, this is two hundred four. This is hundred seventy three. Okay, mega power. Okay, yeah. So that's what we get, and, and then we can plug in the numbers to calculate the safety factors. So according to the good one, okay. We can get okay. So this two, the S E S U T is from problem two, from problem two, same as problem two. So this one you can get is uh, I get 0.95, which is less than one. Now because this is less than one, so we need to um, according to the question, he asks you to calculate uh, the number of cycles to fill. Okay. So how do we calculate the number of cycle to fill? Okay, according to the formula, right? What we do is okay, move down a little bit here. 
Okay. So what we do is we have uh, the n equal to if we recall sigma a over a one over b, right? Yeah. But this is a formula for complete reversed loading. So what we have here, we can't just directly put a sigma over here. We have to find the so-called equivalent, right? The equivalent of one miss, the equivalent, the equivalent completely reversed stress. So we have to look for the equivalent. Okay, only complete reversed stress. Okay, sigma let's see R E V. So how do we find that? Right. In the class we learned, uh, we need to find that use this uh, modified, use the good mind, basically mean stress uh, methods. Okay. So suppose that this is the point for the sigma m a prime, sigma a prime that you find uh, at a bit at the beginning. Okay. This is basically here the state of stress, and a construct straight line between this point and this point. This point is S U T. Right. That's basically how you construct the line for modified good mind. And find the intersection on the vertical axis. So this is basically your this fatigue strains. That's your complete reversed equivalent, complete reversed stress sigma reverse. Okay. So sigma reverse. Okay. It will be simply equal to sigma a prime one minus sigma m prime over s u t. Okay. So this one is around here. Okay, so once you find this, and then we can plug in the, the equations here, and um, okay, excuse me for that, and read until it dials down. Okay, so anyway, and uh, what we can do here is uh, okay, where are we? Okay, yeah, we need to calculate a and the b value, right? So in B here from uh, okay yeah from basically the formula it's very simple okay and you calculate in okay. yeah this is like the midterm exam question so this is what you got okay okay so that's this question. Take a look at problem four. Okay. Now this is a shaft here, and the shaft is uh, undergoes a couple basically over here. Okay. So let's see how do I calculate this? And you do have a fillet over here, which means you will have uh, fatigue stress concentration, and the force right, cycles between 150 and 500 pound force. So in this question here, then what we do? Okay, so we need to find uh, the uh, mean and the alternating values. Okay. So first of all, what will be the maximum torque, and what will be the minimum torque? Because the F is cycling between 150 and 500, and it's a couple, so the the maximum is 500. Okay, multiply by two. Okay, and minimum is 150 multiplied by two. Okay, so then you can calculate tau max and tau uh, tau mean, right? The shear stress because of these two. Okay, so you will get this. Okay, uh, just a second. Okay, so you have a tau max on this. Yeah. Uh, the best way you do before this is uh, you find try to find what the uh, uh, stress concentration is. Okay, so try to get stress concentration basically fast fatigue uh, fatigue stress concentration factor KFS, okay. and the KFS equal to one plus Q shear uh, KTS minus one, right? Yeah. So Q shear you can find from Figure six dash twenty one or Equation six dash thirty five B. Okay, so from equation six dash thirty five B. Okay, I believe it is thirty five or thirty four B maybe. Yeah, don't quite remember that. Uh, find the Q shear. You can also use the template I provided to find a Q shear. And this one you have to find it from uh, your uh, appendix on the book. Okay, this is around one point six. Okay, 
So Q, Q shear is around 0 0.8, okay. maybe 0 0.2, I don't remember, yeah. So anyway, you can get the TFS. So now the tau max tau mean will be just TFS, right? 16 T max, okay, over pi D cube. And tau mean is TFS 16 T mean over pi D cube. Okay, so that's how you calculate this too. So this is calculated 11.25, 3.38 KSI. Okay, so once you get this here, and uh, you can get what the tau A and what the tau M is, right? Okay, and once you know tau A and the tau M, okay, and the rest work is for you to calculate. Okay, before you calculate, you can calculate the safety factor, and you need to know uh, what uh, SE. But however, you know, in this question, this is a torsion. So uh, if I use modify Goodman, you know, basically it's tau A, right? Instead of SE, I'll call it SSE. And here is tau M, right? Over SUT, but it is not SUT anymore, it's SSU, okay? So SSU is 0.67 SUT. So what will be SSE? Right? SSE, basically, that's your modified uh, endurance limit, okay, and uh, that basically depends on the type of loading and uh, by applying the different uh, marine factors. Okay, so let's see. Uh, as you will see, that you need to Ka, okay, around this, and you will need uh, in this case when you calculate the size factor Kb, okay. Then yeah, size factor KB here, you will need to use okay, uh, the, the so-called e uh, equivalent diameter here. Okay, equivalent diameter. The reason is because the type of loading is, is a torsion here, and uh, the the bar is not rotating, right? It, what's uh, what's alternating is the force. So we need to know what the equivalent one is, okay? Because it's a circular shaft, so 0.370. Multiply by, okay, point is three four five, <coughs> okay, and equal to this, okay. Anyway, that's your calculate the equivalent once, and uh, you will find from the textbook how to calculate equivalent diameter, and then your KB, okay, is is use this equivalent diameter DE here. Use the equivalent one here to get do the calculation. Roughly around this. Okay. So the other thing is the loading, because it's a torsion, so we use 0.59. And now you can calculate your SSE by applying and you know, those factors here. Okay, so KA, KB, KC, and SE prime. Okay, so now once you get your SSE, okay, and you have your tau E tau M, plug in your SSE, plug in the SSU, you will be able to calculate NF. And if you want to use the Gerber lines, right, same thing, just uh, uh, the formula is different. Okay. okay, so let's take a look at number five. This will be a long question here. So you have what, uh, it's a clutch here. Okay. So your applied force P is actually a compressive force. And uh, it's a, a repeated force. It's going from zero to P. Now what the maximum is yet to determine. And the torque is related to the P by this much here. F is a coefficient of friction, okay? Yeah. And we said assume the load is, is synchronous with the shaft rotation. So the, the load basically has the same frequency Right, as the frequency of the shaft, okay, and the face should also be the same. Otherwise, it will complicate the situation. Okay, so then now we're ready to tackle this problem. There's a little refillet here, so you will have a stress concentration in this area, okay, and uh, the stress concentration factor is find, okay, your KF, okay, is found to be roughly around 2.81, okay. 
again you need to find um, of course you know how the q is and my q i find is 0.91 using my template the calculations okay so the sigma max right because of this compressive p is a key f and p over right pi d over 2 square okay so in this case it's negative because it's a compressive okay i'll keep the p here so that's what i got for my maximum here okay and your sigma m okay because an alternating basically uh, it's it's an alternating one so your sigma max right so your sigma max is actually just half of your sigma max okay it's also a negative value okay uh, and you don't have to use negative here because if you're negative here you don't have to use that so it will be a negative around 2000 you know p and sigma a now sigma a is always a positive value because that's the amplitude okay so, so sigma a is is basically also half of uh, your uh, sigma max okay, let's use absolute here so it's about 2000 p okay so this is always greater than this is amplitude Now, the rest of work is, you know, uh, you need to calculate your, okay. not only you have this uh, normal stress because of the P, you also have the torque, right, and to generate it because of the compression force P. So, your torque, right, is equal to FP of this, okay, so that means your T max, okay, is basically like this okay T max so essentially your 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 torque is, is also a, uh, a repeated type of a torque so repeated from zero to a maximum so we will have a tall max okay sorry we will have tall mean which equals to tau a in this case, just half of the no, half of this, okay. And uh, don't forget to um, uh, multiply. Oh, sorry, uh, half of what I'm talking about here. So it will be right. This is sh uh, shear stress. So 16 kfs, okay, and t over pi d uh, cube, okay. So uh, it should take half of this. Okay, take half of that. Okay, so then, or just T max right here. Okay, there. So now we have sigma A, sigma M, tau A, and tau M. So calculate the sigma A prime and sigma M prime. Okay. So I got roughly around this much. Okay, so let me know if you got a little bit different answer. So that's fine, actually even if it's a little bit different okay so then we do need to know what se is and all you need to do just apply two factors ka and a kb okay and uh, because the shaft is rotating when you calculate the kb you don't have to, cons to worry about the equivalent to one just use the diameter of the shaft okay once you get this the last one is procedural application of the criteria there right calculate the n like this so n we know that n is 3 so and then plug in you calculate the value of the p so we get p is roughly around this much okay so that's how you do the calculation for this question here and i have also uploaded the tutorial on the last question how to do fatigue analysis using solidworks so hope, uh, hopefully all of this will help you uh, in, in terms of these assignments. And uh, you, do, you still have two days to go. Okay, so I don't think that's too late. Okay, thank you. Bye.